Vanessa. And I'm Travis. And we are late to the party, and it is a Christmas edition of Better, Better Late Than Ever. And Travis, last year we had a smorgasbord of Christmas trailers all in one. That's the right. That was a lot of work, long time. <laughs> yeah, it we was. We figured we spread out the holiday cheer this year, though. You know. Yeah, because I think it was like six trailers all in one oh, video. Oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed it, and uh, because of that, those who commented and recommended for this year, I decided to use those recommendations for this uh, this month's Christmas special. So Christmas movies, Vanessa, what are you looking forward to that we didn't get to see last year? To be honest, I don't remember exactly what we did last year. <laughs> Look it up. So. Look it up. <laughs> so she was gonna do it too. Um, maybe Santa Claus. I don't remember if we did that last year, but I maybe Santa Claus because I love Santa Claus. I don't remember if we did the Santa Claus nope. last year, nope. but no, that's a that's a tell right there from. So Travis. we did not do the Santa Claus. So I hope the Santa Claus is on here. What so, about you? For me, uh, damn. What again? Also, I don't remember what we did. I know we Look did it up, Home Alone. Look it up. <laughs> but you guys can look at, oh, Home Alone 2, because I know we did the first one last year, so Home Alone 2 is what I'd be looking Duncan's forward to. Duncan's Toy Chest. Duncan's Toy Chest, well, indeed. This one is not Either one Santa of Claus or Home Alone 2. <laughs> Damn it. It is recommended, though, by Saturday Morning Fan. Okay. Uh, this movie was released June 8th, 1984. The same day, the same day of Ivan Reitman's Ghostbusters. Interesting, okay. I uh, had a budget of 11 million. All right. Made a box office of 153.1 million dollars. I'd say that's a success. Yes, uh, it ranked second, of course, to Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Uh, it made 1.1 million dollars less than Ghostbusters. That's still a huge That's still, huge. yeah, that's still pretty good if you're going up against Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, and this film was actually one of the two major films of 1984 that influenced the new MPA rating system. Okay. And so you know the other one is Temple, Temple of, of Doom. Doom. So this one actually had a huge influence on it. All right. Uh, the score was composed by Jerry Goldsmith. Oh, okay. Jerry Goldsmith. Yep. And it stars Zach G Galligan and Phoebe Cates. Oh, okay, of course, yes. So, um... Let's do it, let's come on. Let's take a look here, you guys. Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Dante. <laughs> right up front, they didn't even tell, they're like, this is Gremlins. Really? We're back in Hill Valley. A nice job. Just during the winter time. Kind of looks like a, a nice poltergeist girl. house. If you're not doing anything this Thursday night, maybe you'd like to uh, go out on a date with me? I'd love to. And loving parents who are about the inventor to father. Like no, 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 don't shake it. We're gonna have to open it now. We'll wait till Christmas. The most unusual gift. Oh, oh, it's it's no. It's no. It's your new pet. My wine. Come on, Bonnie, be a good dog. My dad gave it to me. But there are a few things. I totally forgot he, he does like that blinky thing. If you expose it to light, you can hurt it. If you get it wet, it will multiply. All that from water? They got wet? Yeah, plain water. And most important, no matter how much they do bake, not feed it never after, after midnight. midnight. Let them eat after midnight. Because when they do, because technically they, they yeah. They... <laughs> and you got the music in there too. Clever. Mischievous. What's going on here? <laughs> What's going on? And dangerous. Gremlins, huh? Is it the other cop, right. Mike Ermitrap from Breaking Bad? Hundreds of them. Well, I, I don't know, maybe thousands. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Judge Reinhold. Where did they come from? Look, I know it sounds crazy. But Locks himself in the safe. Hours, you're gonna have a major disaster on your hands. <laughs> oh, yeah, there she goes flying. What is it like? Grand Deagle, Deagle. Directed by Joe Dante. They'll be expecting you. So yes, not a whole lot to it, just kind of the expositional setup of what the movie's going to be about. They you basically don't get the, the just heavy tell heads. you exactly what these creatures are. You don't they see don't, the magwai, you just don't. see the top of the heads of the gremlins, Yeah, right? and you don't actually see like what happens during that time, you know what I mean? Like You see a little bit, but right. not too much. And it's funny, you say you don't see the Mogwais, because like, I didn't even realize they didn't even show Gizmo. Like I just know Gizmo so right. well they that I the, see him when like, I... His little yeah. Hand, you're like, Gizmo. yeah. And it's it's funny because that poster, I just I remember that poster with Gizmo and and, yeah. and the box and it was just like I remember seeing it, it was like a terrifying 
mysterious poster, but the movie. I love the movie so much, and it's it's mind-boggling I didn't get it when you gave us the description. So dark, though. It's a dark Christmas movie. Uh, before we get into it, would you see the movie based on this trailer? Yeah, probably. I'd be like, oh, these weird creatures. Let's it's, go it's at it. It's kind of like, though, right? Yeah, like it's, they're going into some crazy antics. I want to know what's going on. Folklore. I mean, that's the big thing about the gremlins. It's the folklore of destroying. And interesting you, know, you brought that up because when researching this, there's something about gremlins I didn't know about until I saw that. So the notion of gremlins was first conceived only during World War II. Interesting. They didn't exist before then. So it existed from the uh, Air Force, the mm -hmm. military. They said the when planes. aircraft mechanical failures happened, it was because of the gremlins. Mm -hmm. and it was a joke. So that entered a popular culture when Ronald Dahl himself pro uh, produced a book called The Gremlins. Roald Dahl? So, thank you. Yes. Thank Go you. On. Um, it's just interesting to think because I never even I thought the Gremlins was just a term that was around forever, but it's actually still a fairly new term. Right. The fact that this movie then popularized the term of Gremlins being a mischief creatures. And the only you know folklore that I knew of Gremlins came from the Twilight Zone, and eventually the Twilight Zone movie too with John yeah. Lithgow. Yeah. And for that John Lithgow version of the Gremlins. Very similar to what you kind of get from this Gremlins with the slimy, the green, the is it's much more terrifying in Twilight Zone than I think in these ones. Um, but yeah, Joe Dante had so much fun making this movie. You could just tell because even though it is dark, even though it is you know a, a dark comedy, people are dying left and right. That's why they had a problem with the ratings. Right, it was rated PG. Yeah, and they realized no, this is dark. People are dying and shot out there, chopped up in the kitchen it's not they not live cool. though they live they live because they're in gremlins too which is weird because they get killed by the the snow uh wow. plow All right and yet they come back in the second one Talk. and every joe dante movie after that uh, i yeah uh, i i actually personally like the second one more than the first one our, I know our buddy crazy. Leonard Malton gets killed by the gremlins in the, the second <laughs> one. Uh, so. yeah. the second one is i think more so just kind of crazy and out there that it's like what would happen if these creatures were not, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... It was a spoof. It yeah, was a, it's a, a spoof. spoof of itself, too, but it, at the same time, it was a lot of fun. I mean, you get different characters, different new characters as far as the gremlins go. You don't have just, like, the, the set ones. There's, right. like, different ones that are smart, and you the get the female, one, The female one. Like, love there's it. different ones yeah. that the happen. Bat, yeah. The bat signal. <laughs> right. uh, and the ones that break into the theater, and Hulk Hogan has to, what are you doing up Sorry, there? folks. <laughs> <laughs> and I go back into it. And yeah, that's with the conversation that Phoebe Cates gives, the monologue about her father oh and God. dressing up. It's okay. so messed up. It is so messed up. And they actually revisit that too in the sequel. In a spoof type. <laughs> they, they yeah. do. They make Abraham Lincoln in the park. Oh. <laughs> oh, it was just, oh, no, we don't have time for this. Yeah. And they just move I love on. it. And it, is, it, is, it is a very dark film, but it is yet fun and entertaining. Right. And the fact that it has been socially huge. If you guys have ever owned a Furby, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, of course. Everyone. Yeah. It, it was just a huge thing. They've always had legal battles on, on what the Magwais look like and and how they are presented in mainstream media and, and Howie Mandel as, as well as Howie voice. Mandel as Gizmo. Gizmo and then yeah the gremlins have kind of they become an entity in pop culture that if you see it you know it so it's yes. locked in place and to come out in the same year as Ghostbusters that's not a feat that could be easily matched, and they, they did a good job. So Spielberg presents all those freaking movies that came out, like <laughs> Poltergeist and, and uh -huh. Gremlins, even though he wasn't the one that directed it, technically for uh, Poltergeist. But they still did an awesome job with the directors that they ended up having at the helm for these films, especially Gremlins. So yes. thank you guys for watching our reaction to the original trailer for Gremlins. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. You can also like and subscribe. And do the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Stardust. All the social networking gin joints, you know where they are. Kicking the party, fill the party, keep the party going on a Patreon. Gets us where we need to go. Thank you, Travis, for bringing this to our first Christmas edition. Oh, thank episode. you, Saturday morning fam. I appreciate you. It was a great recommendation. We just got more months, more weeks. Yeah, a couple more weeks. Christmas, not months. Yeah, a couple oh, more weeks. I'm though. okay with Christmas being so many months. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, is if you guys have any recommendations for Christmas episodes and you tell us now, you'll probably get them next year. So let them know now because Travis will look at them uh -huh. for next year when Christmas comes because yes. he already knows what we're doing the next couple weeks. So thank yeah. you guys so much. And as always, now it's time to say goodbye. And this party is over. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye.